We're on the air. Bobby V along with Jake Johnston uh, from uh, Jake's establishment here, his furniture store. And you really feel comfortable when you walk in here, Jake, with all the couches and chairs and the beds. And, uh, you know, I know you got a lot of sales going on, so I'd like to see some people come out. We're just off the four corners. Uh, you can find us pretty easily. Uh, what's your address out here? Uh, 1100 Woodlawn Road. 1100 Woodlawn Road, the old r and And a uh, really nice place here with uh, <laughs> Jim Ash on board. And you've been here for 10 years? Ten years, yeah. Actually, uh, the second of November was our ten-year anniversary. Well, of course, we got Jim here engineering it. We got Lloyd on the camera. He's enjoying some of the treats. And where do they bring those treats in from? Oh yeah, the Hampton Inn. Beautiful Hampton Inns providing our uh, breakfast and uh, coffee here this morning. Hampton Inn. I gas is hot. down to three thirteen in Lincoln right now. I stopped and got some gas out here. Uh, on at Thornton's, and a guy came up to me and asked me if he could have a ride. <laughs> I said, "Well, I'm not going too far. I'm just." <laughs> going down to Jake's, he wanted to go out of town, and uh, he wanted to know if there was a uh, like a shelter here in Lincoln. I don't think there is, I unless you can get a room at the uh, Salvation Army there on Kickapoo Street. I think the uh, old Amtrak station used to be. Used yeah, you could stay. <laughs> yeah, or you could crawl into the post office. <laughs> go knock on the police station. See they if they have any open rooms. Yeah, they might let you in. <laughs> Hey, uh, what about this Ravante Rice, uh, quite a ball player out of Champaign Centennial. I guess he's playing for the Illini now. Had a big game last night. Yeah, last time I saw him, he knocked off Lincoln. Oh, it was back in 09, I would think, in the sectional championship yeah. at Eisenhower. Yeah, they had uh, they had a heck of a team, as Champaign Centennial did, uh, for a couple years in a row, I believe. Uh oh, yep. bat phone's going on. I think that's my brother. That's my daughter, Jackie. Oh. Hi, Jackie. We're on the air. Uh <laughs> But I'll talk to you later on, okay? <laughs> All right, you can call in. What's that our wasn't number, Jim? As loud as earlier. Sep seven three seven three seven nine one. You can talk to me on the air. All right, love you. That was my daughter Jackie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's at least the work going. phone didn't go off. Well. Could have been worse. I so guess. anyhow, Ravante Rice, would yeah. you say he had last night? Twenty-two points and nine rebounds. Wow, he he's a man among men, and I imagine he played a good defensive game too. Yeah, he he's a pretty solid player. We'll see how the season progresses with this team. Uh, Jim and I were talking; they they look like a team that uh, could get a lot better later on in the year. A little gelling going on, so we'll see how that all plays out. But they've got a lot of new players with. I believe it was four players last year that moved on, transferred to other schools, um, plus a couple that graduated. So, I mean, they've, they've got it really a different team this year. So it'll be uh, definitely an interesting and fun season. It may be a tough team to play if they can make it into the tournament. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, if I remember right, Ravante Rice, he pretty much willed Champaign Centennial, Centennial to the, the, I think it was a 3A championship. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. And he, he would always come through in the big moments and, Oh, he, he uh, was tough. I, re yeah. I remember that. Uh, I think like I think he was a three-year starter, if I'm thinking right, for Champagne Centennial. So yeah, he could do it all. I I don't know his size. He could be like six four, maybe. I don't think he's quite that big. I'm thinking he's like six one, but I, I could oh, really? be wrong. Yeah. I, I thought it may, or maybe I thought he was maybe a Bruce Douglas size, you know, stocky kind of guy. But he is stocky. Yeah. I mean, he, he is a he's a powerful kid. So. Uh, well, they have him down. Liz is six four, but I'm thinking if you're standing next to him, I'd say he's six B, three. I say I'm yeah. an inch taller than him. Yeah, <laughs> they got Dallas uh, shooting guard. So, like I said, he's he could be a pretty pretty uh, pretty big deal for the Illini here for the next few years. And what's their head coach's name? Gross. Gross. Sorry. What, what about uh, players? Uh, what other? Who else have they got that's pretty strong? Oh. Uh, Run down here for you one second. Pull it all up. There we go. We got EQ, uh back this year. They've got uh, the big forward from, I believe, New Jersey as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Bertrand's back. Uh, Abrams, then Ravante Rice, Tate. Uh, they, I mean, they got. To be honest, like I said, it's pretty much a new team. Jake, you, we, you we've got, got a call. Uh oh. Hello, who have we got here? Hey, Dad, this is Jackie. Hi, Jackie, how you doing? Good, how are you? Wait, this is my daughter, Jackie, and um, she was pretty much like uh, the blonde in the Adams family because we had all athletes in our family, and she was the non-athlete. She's the smart... The Munsters. The Munsters, I'm there sorry. I knew, I knew I had that wrong. Well, how, what's going on, <laughs> What's going on, Jackie? 
Well, I got a question for you. You might be able to answer. Amy just sent me a text message. Uh huh. Y'all. Yes. She's pretty pumped up. Brayton had thirty. Thirty. I ever check my phone. Thirty-six 30, points. You already, you already heard about it. All yeah, right, was that the county it. tournament or the city tournament? One I don't of them. Know. Okay. No, I don't know the details. <laughs> she just sent me a text message. She wanted to know if you knew what the record was at Carroll School for. Yeah. Well, the the record. Hold on, Lily is telling me to come on. <laughs> Well, the record for a long time at Carroll Catholic was held by Danny Duff. He scored 40 points, but that was broken by Kyle Young in a in a tournament game. He scored 41. Wow. So Tyler. that could be the well, seventh grade record, though, with 36 points. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I'll let her know. Okay. Well, thanks for hey. calling in, Jackie. All right. Say, well, we'll see you later. Okay. I'll be there. All right. All right. Bye. Love you. Bye. All right, I'm done with the family business, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Scoring records going on at uh, yeah. Carroll Catholic this year. Yeah, young man hit for 36 points. and uh, Yeah, so. It's a good game right there. Yeah. Who yeah. were they playing? I might have been West Lincoln Broadwell. Okay. I'm not positive. Oh, no, no, that game was against Greenview. Oh, well, playing Greenview, yeah. Yeah, they left the teams uh, locally alone then. Yeah, yeah. Now, did they combine with uh, Middletown? Yeah, in and, and, uh, Zion. Okay. That because there's just not enough athletes. There's not enough kids. And yeah. I, yeah. They. Uh, what do they call that? Co-op. Yeah. Co-oping them. Yeah. I think they do that in track and field, probably volleyball, and there's probably a lot of schools that do that now. That co-op, and the, you know, they got to do that to well, be competitive. It, yeah, I'd almost like to see, you know, and I, I think they tried that once uh, for football. Try to get some Mount Pulaski and maybe even Hartsburg Emden kids. Yeah, and I've always suggested Lincoln, that, but I. I I think they had tried that one time, I, and I, I could be wrong. Sam Knox would be the one to yeah. call in on that, but uh, that'd been the way to go. You know, you got them big farm kids from those two towns, yeah. put them in Lincoln. All of a sudden, we've got a new offensive line and defensive line. So right, and uh, we've always had good athletes out of Middletown, Lawndale. And, oh yeah, and the Atlanta kids though they play for Olympia. Atlanta does play for Olympia, but like I said, I don't, I don't believe Hartsburg plays at all. And Mount Pulaski doesn't play. No, I, they might. And they've they've they always had good athletes at those schools. I mean, right. you know, a lot of them don't play basketball because there's only so many basketball players on yeah. the team. Right. But uh, you know, there's a lot of football players. I think there. Mount Pulaski kids might have played at uh, Warrensburg for a while. Yeah. Warrensburg Latham, but somehow just for a couple years. Yeah. yeah I, I think there's too much uh, too much tension between the schools, to be honest, to let the kids come in and take some of the other kids right. playing time so yeah well yeah that's the way that goes yeah where's look at there i got back up yeah. the way now well uh do you think uh, as far as basketball since we were talking about basketball do you think miami can uh, get the three peat lebron james and the gang i'll yeah. tell you what it's it's uh, a good possibility but brooklyn looks awfully good this year yeah um not a big nba guy but from what i know brooklyn looks good uh, and Indiana, Indiana looks really tough. They've got a, a, a good lineup, and uh, San they, Antonio, they, the old guys. They, you know, yeah. I don't know if they picked up some new blood, but they could have won it easily in Game Six last year. But, yeah, I uh, thought they should have. Yeah. Choked at the free throw line. Yep. Uh, but you know, I think Indiana gave uh, Miami about all they could handle last year in the conference finals. And I think they're probably I w I I would put them as a team to beat, but. Yeah, you know that's that's my pick for the year, I the guess. Defending champs. Yeah, later on we're going to have on uh, Walt Landers. He's the head of the uh, the youth wrestling program here in Lincoln. Yeah, and uh, I would great say with the kids. Yeah. for our trivia question, all you've got to do is call in and talk about the history of wrestling in Lincoln, whether you right. whether you wrestled for Georgia Rochek or Floyd B or or Coach, Coach Gardner. B. Coach B was classic. Coach B, yeah, and one of the nicest guys in the world. Yeah. 30 years, the wrestling room's named after Coach B. Yeah. Quite a gentleman. Uh, yeah, he built quite a tradition there. And both his sons were great wrestlers. Yes. So if you have any of the history for us, uh, the most recent history, I remember in 09, a uh, young man by the name of Colt Hickey, another one by the name of Nick Haferkamp, yeah. both finished fourth in state that year. They were juniors in 09. And Haferkamp's... Did Colt finish... Uh I think Fourth? I think they both were their okay. junior years, and Haferkamp's gone on to be an All-American yep. at McKendry. Uh, his mother's uh, my uh, number one here at the store. Okay, so she works out here for me, and uh, we we talk about uh, Nick quite a bit. Yeah, I think so. I went to turn on some water one time, and I couldn't get away from her because it was the Nick Haferkamp oh, yeah. show. 
Oh yeah, you yeah. Uh, you get her talking about Nicholas. You you see proud mama pop up there. Yeah, and she 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 can go on for an hour or two if she needs to. Now his freshman year and his I think he finished fifth. I believe Division Two and maybe eighth last year, but I think he's got a red shirt this year. He may have an injury. He, he I believe, he red shirt last year. Okay. And uh, he, he's playing again this year, and uh, sounds like he's doing pretty well. Uh, that's you know, that, with, with wrestling, you know, in in high school, you can have certain guys, and Nick was definitely one of them uh, that you you can really outwork the other guy, and you can be a little bit better of an athlete, you know, because yeah. you get that. Once you get to the college rankings, though, it's it's a different story. Mm -hmm. Every single guy on, uh, po uh, opposed to you is working as hard as you every day, and they were the best athlete at their school. That's right. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a different story, but he's holding his own, you know. He, uh, they've got a few more a few more months left of uh, wrestling, and uh, he'll be going back to nationals again. Last year he, he finished really well, and uh, I, I anticipate he's probably – going to close out pretty strong this year. So the kid's an unbelievable athlete, though. And academically, I hear he's very strong. Yeah, very smart kid. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to – he's wanting to be a teacher and also a wrestling coach. So yeah. hopefully that plays out well for him. A friend of mine, he's out fishing right now. I talked to him on the way in. He was an accomplished wrestler in high school and at uh, junior college level. And uh, his name is Bob Broughton. And he told me that uh, the difference at the college level was – you had to be more cerebral, and you had to you had to sometimes string guys out. And his coach had to uh, tell him to do that because in high school he would just attack yeah. like a Doberman. But at the college level, you know, you gotta kind of play a chess game sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, Jason Lawrence, uh, another big wrestler, uh, he was in school with me. Kind of same thing, you know. He was a uh, very similar to Nick Haverkamp. Uh, very quick and whatnot, very strong. One of the, he was by far the best wrestler we had. Uh, well, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say it. we had a couple of really good ones actually, but I mean he was just dominant uh, all through high school. He, he was on to college, and he he was telling me that he's you know it's just a different ball game. Yeah, you know he, everybody's the best wrestler in that. You know, so yeah, it, it's just totally different ball game and. Uh, that's some way back machine right there talking about Jason Lawrence. Yeah, and I can go farther back. Uh, I think actually George Hirochek, a math teacher at Lincoln, started the wrestling program. Could have been 59-60. I remember guys like uh, Dennis Jones and uh, and Jimmy Stallions. Oh you know, they were studs back then that wrestled for him. And then the Singleton brothers, uh, Jeff and, uh, and Pat Singleton, they were both uh, accomplished wrestlers, went to state. And then as you go on, and then of course there's the great uh, Dave Clem and uh, the Berger brothers, Jim mm -hmm. and 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 uh, Matt Berger, and uh, you know we've had a great tradition of wrestling oh, yeah. here at at, uh, at Lincoln, and uh, I know uh, we're probably ready for a commercial break here, and uh, we'll tap out and we'll be back. Back in the cheap seats, uh, I'm in the witness protection program, and I'm co-hosting uh, the program with Jake Johnston today out here at his business on 1100 Woodlawn Road. Jim Ash is engineering. Lloyd Kirby is uh, on the camera, and our special guest today is uh, Mr. Walt Landers. Walt, uh, pleasure to have you out here. He's the graduating class of Lincoln High, 1983, wrestled there, and now he's the head, I, do you call it the uh, youth program? It's for Lincoln Youth Wrestling. Lincoln Youth Wrestling. And... Uh, I imagine you go around the grade schools putting on... Uh, 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 usually we, we do handouts to the grade schools and get stuff in the paper and the online stuff and get the word out. Um, we've been... This is our 13th season, so the word's out there and we get a lot of returning wrestlers too. And uh, um, we we get everybody in, we get the information out and, and people show up. So. Is, is there, an al is there a... Uh, wrestling program at Lincoln Junior High School? Yes. Yep. Does Alec Dawson still? Alex Dawson is the the head coach, and I am also the assistant coach there. Okay. And th that's been going on for quite a few years. I, I wrestled in it back when I was in grade school. Wow. So that goes back to the 70s, yeah. late yeah. 70s. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what year it was started in. It was started right around uh, the time I was uh, moving into the junior high, and 
Of course, Floyd B. was instrumental in getting that the started. The great Floyd B., yeah, yeah, one of the nicest guys ever, 30 years at the helm uh, at Lincoln High School. And he started that program, the youth program. Uh, he uh, he developed somewhat part of it, um, and what it, which led into the IESA program at the junior high. Uh, he always had a program every spring for kids uh, mm -hmm. where they could go out and, and learn some stuff for about six weeks and then travel to some tournaments and yeah uh, he didn't leave them out anyways yeah yeah well you know uh when i was in high school early 60s they'd have us wrestle in pe that's the only thing i know about wrestling but i had a math teacher by the name of george horochek and he's the guy that started the lincoln high school wrestling program i wish somebody would call in and give us the definite year and i'm thinking it was around 59 60 and he was he was not a wrestler but he learned from a book and he started the program and started to teach the kids and I guess his last year would have been 69 or 70 as coach, and then Floyd took over. Yeah, I've, I've heard the name, but I'm not real familiar with yeah. what, what he did. So yeah. But I have heard the name. Yeah, George Horochek. The one thing I remember about him was in math class, the way he got your attention was uh, in, um, I guess it would have been an averages class, he said that every time you take the highway, your chances of getting in an accident get better. So that, you know, being young drivers, that got our attention. But anyway, he was the guy that started it all. Then it went to Floyd B. and then to Coach Gardner, and you told me that now he's uh, passing over the reins. Yeah, um, Justin Dietrich, uh, who has been a teacher at the, the high school in the building trades program, um, came from a storied tradition up in Olympia under Mike Manahan. Uh, kind of a program similar to what Lincoln's had over the years, and uh, he's taken over the reins uh, of head coach and uh, looking forward to good things. All right, so we've had back-to-back -back building trades uh, wrestling legends. Tell us about the guy that was the building trades guy before. Uh, Billy Marquardt was a, a state series official. He, I don't, I'm not sure how many years he officialed, but uh, he was an official. But he done the state, you know, the state over at the, the assembly hall for years and the team state tournaments and mm -hmm. uh, he was really really fun guy to be around. I've never been to the state tournament, but they say that's uh, a quite a uh, presentation when they first come out. The the grand march for the finals is really something to see. It's it's yeah. you know kind of like that Olympic feeling. They play the Olympic oh, theme yeah. song and the the spotlights are flashing and it's uh, all the wrestlers are lined up and it's it's pretty exciting. Always <laughs> like to get the young kids over to see that and right. Now, have you ever gone to the college nationals? Uh, yeah, I've been to the NCAA nationals a few times. Have you? Yeah. Now, when I think about wrestling, the first name that always pops in my name is Dan Gable. I mean, the legendary uh, Danny Gable, he wrestled for, was it Iowa? He University? wrestled at Iowa State, actually, uh -huh. but he was the head coach for Iowa okay. University and had a string of like 12 seasons of national champions. I don't know for sure. Uh, you know, I'm not good on those numbers, but I know he was one several national championships well you know I, tr Iowa. I try to do my homework for this walt and uh of course the olympics goes back to, to ancient times when uh they uh, it was called the supreme contest in the olympic games but then uh the first national tournament in the united states was held in new york city in 1888 in the modern olympics where the first wrestling was in 1904 in st louis it was the first time that uh, they wrestled in the olympics there and uh, actually Wrestling started in college, and then it came on down to the high schools and the youth programs. So that's how they got it started. Okay, well, you've studied that, and I haven't, so <laughs> and, and you know a little more about that than I do. George Washington, at the age of 47, took on seven guys from Massachusetts right. and beat them. Well, one of the one of the most uh, one of the most uh, well, what do I want to say prestigious uh, well, prestigious wrestlers around here was Abe Lincoln. That's right. He at age 21. That was in 1830. He won the Sangamon County Championship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he knocked out. He knocked out Jack Armstrong. Oh. Okay. Jack was wrestling. He was playing dirty, and I guess they body slammed him, knocked him out. Right. But now there's, there's different styles of wrestling, and uh, back then they fought. The, you started out and they called it collar, and you grabbed a guy's elbow. Maybe they just threw a guy down. Um, I don't know unless you're talking about Greco. Well, Greco it, it sounded sort of like yeah. Greco. Now, are, do you teach, uh, they have catch-as-you-can type wrestling and freestyle. What type? Okay, we coach folk style wrestling. Folk style. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't heard of that. <laughs> folk style is basically what the college wrestles okay. and high school and, and yeah. grade schools. Yeah. Uh, your international styles are Greco and freestyle, which that's what they wrestle in the Olympics. Okay. It's more of an international. We do have a strong program. 
uh-huh. you know, in that uh, Illinois is actually one of the top wrestling states in the nation. But Folk's um, the most exciting. That's yeah, they're all exciting. Pretty exciting. Greco yeah. can be pretty exciting when you see a guy with his feet where his head's supposed to be. I um, get yeah. Greco is basically just upper body wrestling. You uh-huh. can't attack the legs at all, and uh, it can be pretty exciting when you see a guy get thrown for five and yeah. yeah. It's it's it can be pretty exciting. Well, you know, I, earlier I was talking about these paintings they found back in the Egyptian caves and the, and then France and the caves, and back then they had basically uh, demonstrated the same holes that we use today. Could you explain some of those different type moves, like the half Nelson and different? Well, basically, a half Nelson is one of the most basic uh, moves to turn the opponent to his back to score near fall points or a fall. So, is a near fall? Is that a point or two? Near point? fall. It's there's two different uh, types of near fall. You have a two point near fall, where you expose a wrestler's back within 45 degrees uh, for for t- two seconds, and then that's a two point near fall. Mm-hmm. If you hold him there in that position for five seconds then it's a three so a wrestling match is three rounds if i remember right you 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 start out standing up right you start the neutral position uh for the first period when the second period comes along one way or another one wrestler gets a choice of top top bottom neutral or defer he can you know choose one of those four Mm -hmm. um and then in the third period, the opposite wrestler gets that choice. So you uh, probably teach different ways to escape from that bottom yeah, position. Yeah, we, we like to stand up, you know, stand up and get out. Um, there's a reversal. If you do a reversal on the guy, that's two points. A, an escape is one. Mm-hmm. So so uh, how, how young are you when you start out in this youth program? Uh, you know, we've had kids, you know, as young as five. Usually we stick to kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Usually it's kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, we do have some older kids um, that for some one reason or another, don't wrestle at the junior high, so they wrestle with us. So you can come over from a Carroll Catholic at West Lincoln, Broadwell, Chester East Lincoln? Yeah, and, and actually, you know, our program's open to anybody that wants to be involved. Kids from the county, you know, we, wow. we've we had kids from Hartsburg, Mount Pulaski. Yeah. Um, uh, as, you know, you guys were talking about the co-oping earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, the junior high, all the schools are co-op with the junior high in wrestling, so someone from Carroll or West Lincoln, Broadwell or Chester East, they can all come over and wrestle in the junior high program. Yeah. Now, in all the sports, uh, well, I guess golf and, and wrestling, you're out there by yourself. And they're, they're called team sports and running. But in wrestling especially, it's mano a mano. It's just you, you. It's a team scored thing, but it comes down to a special kind of individual that wants to wrestle. And you're out there all by yourself. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. You're out there all by yourself. There's nobody to blame. Um, so it's, you know, it, it can be tough at times. Jake, you know, I usually ham it up when I get on these shows. So I, I want to, if you got some questions. Uh, let's see. Did Were we you co- a wrestler? Did we cover the Olympics? We covered the Olympics. Um, one thing we that you guys didn't, you know, that you didn't mention and you didn't find oh. in your studies <laughs> is that they were, they uh, eliminated wrestling from the 2020 games. But they're coming back. But they made it. They, come, yeah. they had to compete with three or four other sports to be put back in. And that's not right. Um, Wrestling's the king. Wrestling started back in the Greek, you know, right. the first original. You think about it, the three top sto- uh, sports are hunting, running, and wrestling. Right. you got to have those three. <laughs> but you talked about, you know, Dan Gable. Yeah. And it actually became a, an international uh, an international thing to try to get, the you know, the U.S. teamed up with Russia, Iran, um, these Iran and Russia are two of the biggest wrestling nations in, in the world. And one of our biggest competitors. Iran and Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but they, everybody came together in the wrestling community from all over the world yeah. to battle this. And, and they were successful, and it got put back in in the, in the, 20, in the 2020. Total game. insanity. It, it was like kicking baseball out of well, America. Well, baseball was one of the ones, the sports that they were competing with to get put in. That's not right. So Wrestling uh, is the Olympics. It, well, it's track and field and wrestling. Well, you know, not to jump off topic here, but the one thing I will say about your program is I believe for a lot of other sports, youth wrestling is huge. I think it, it, it helps with their foot feet, uh, footwork, uh, their their coordination, their skills, teach them physicality. I mean, for these young kids, I mean, let's face it, kids nowadays, they're not like, well, myself and maybe you, Bob, where you got out there at the playground and you're playing different kinds of tag and you're, you know, climbing trees and this and that. They don't do that much anymore. 
No. So even, you know, you're talking, what, five-year-olds probably is about when you start? Five, six-year-old. You're yeah. talking when you're that age, they're coming in, and they literally have not really had physical contact other than maybe with a brother and sister. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's really about it. Nice thing about, uh, well, my nephew, Tate Johnston, mm -hmm. he came into your program last year. And he wa really wasn't sure about it and whatnot. And I tell you what, he just kept getting better and better. And, and you know, he's, we were talking about being a little bit a, a, a more advanced. He was a little bit more advanced as, as an athlete than what the kids he was facing. Physical ability. Physical ability, exactly. Then when he goes to play football, you could tell he, he took a lot of what he learned from the wrestling program and put it right into the football, and he dominated. I mean, there was... There was kids bigger than him on the other side, and he was blown by them like they were standing still. I yeah. mean, it, it was amazing how much more agile and everything else. And a lot of it had to do with the football or the wrestling program that he was a part well, of. Well, if you take two sports that fit together, it's wrestling and football. Yeah. They complement each other so well. Yeah, um, good and physicality you, it, it, that, and everything and you else. look at who most of your best tacklers. Yeah, they're wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about the the '09 team with Hafer Camp and uh, yeah. Well, look Hickey. at Colt Hickey. Yeah, I mean, great tacklers. And Hickey, he probably didn't start wrestling until what his sophomore year. Uh, you know, I think he started probably in junior high. I'm not real yeah. sure. Um, and I he was one, not a lot of technique. He'd come, he'd charge you, and he'd come chest to chest with you. I, I remember yeah. Matt Berger talking about that. I don't know what kind of move he that wasn't is. afraid to headbutt you. I mean, he'd yeah. come at you. <laughs> He's one of them guys that you a kid comes up and wants to wrestle around with you in practice. Eh, yeah. That's all right. I'm, I, there ain't no I don't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> so it's uh, all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now is he he. He's wrestling now in college, isn't he? No, he he did wrestle a little bit at Lincoln College, okay. but he's he's no longer he's no longer there. Okay, yeah. yeah. He, I I'm not sure if he's still in school there, but okay, but he's not wrestling. I know that. Just say good kid. I mean, strongest man. Oh, his, kid out. his strength. Yeah, he was yeah. just put together. Yeah, and was, yeah. And you look at the, the Lincoln legends like uh, Cl uh, Dave Clem and, and the Berger brothers. Clem for years was the head coach at uh, Lincoln College, but I believe now he's moved on to be the athletic director. Correct. Yeah. And then. I know Matt Berger, I was talking to him uh, a while back. Uh, he hiked the Grand Canyon, so I had to do it. But anyhow, um, he he helped coach, I think, at the high school for quite right. a few years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Matt was a Lincoln College wrestler. Uh, yeah. Him and Jim and I both uh -huh. were at Lincoln College together. Wow, what a team. Um, and uh, Matt went on. He was an All-American at, at Lincoln College, and then he went on to wrestle for the University of Illinois. Yeah. And I'm not sure if he made All-American status there or not. Yeah. But but he was a starter for the University of Illinois. Well, Walt Landers is our guest today, and he uh, he's the head of the uh, the Lincoln Youth uh, Wrestling Program. And guys like Walt Landers and Dave Clem and, and the Berger Brothers, they can come up and just grab you by the little finger and take you down <laughs> to the ground. I don't, that, they, they know all the submission holds. So when you're around him, you're always a little bit nervous. It's sort of like being around Sonny Liston. When I started to, to kind of demonstrate one of the uh, moves to Mr. Uh, uh, Walt here, I noticed he kind of tightened up. And I, for a second there, I thought he was coming at me. But he's really a nice guy. <laughs> hey, we were talking about Rogers. The Kirby Rogers. Kirby Rogers, great guy. Yeah, he was a former dist uh, superintendent of District 27 schools. He's a yeah. wrestling official uh, here in town. Um, very well known in the state as an official does state series. Yeah, um, Pete Ross. Pete Ross was a good official for years. He's yeah. been retired for quite a while. Has he? Yeah. And of course, you got Dan Folsher, who the great Danny Folsher. Yeah. Um, you know, Dan has done so much for the sport of wrestling. It's unbelievable, and yeah. it's he's really, really in the state of Illinois has really made a big difference in our sport. They used to have a show on uh, Channel Five, and I think Danny Folsher. Uh, was the MC and Berger was like his color man, and I used to enjoy watching that. Not being a guy that knows anything about wrestling, it was l great listening to him. They'd explain all the holds and yeah. so forth and so on. Well, they usually they televise, you know, a few meets each year at the high school. They'll have them, they've had them televised in the past, anyways. And, yeah. Um, so we always try to get as mo get exposure whenever we can. So. Yeah. Well, explain some of the basics moves to us, like double leg takedowns. Well, you got your, you know, your offensive wrestling on your feet. You got your double, single, fireman's, uh, high crotch type stuff. Um, then once you get him on the mat, you got to get him broke down off his base and get him turned over and score your points. If you're on the bottom, it's vice versa. You got to get out of there, whatever it takes, you know, to get back on your feet so you can go after him. Now, what's the uh, the length of the rounds? Like three? Uh, the high school is three two-minute periods. Okay. Uh, college is a three-two-two, 
and then like most of ours are, are one minute periods for the kids for the kids yeah um you know we have our lincoln youth railer rumble it's our wrestling tournament that we host every year basically our fundraiser that's coming up in uh, december uh december 8th on the sunday at lincoln community high school last year we had over 500 youth wrestlers there um so we wrestle eight nine mats at nine matches at a time get through you know get through it and uh, if, if you've never been to a youth wrestling tournament, you ought to come out and just take a look and see. I mean, yeah. We pack the gym. If the gym's full, we probably bring 2,000 people to town. Um, from all over uh, oh, the state. All over central Illinois. You know, we've got teams that's come from Danville and that area that come over and wrestle for us. Uh, this will be our 10th year for the tournament. So I think we put on a pretty good tournament, and people like to come back to those where things run smooth and, and, and they're done well. We're going to take a time out, but we're going to come back. We're not going to tap out. We'll be back for more wrestling. We'll be okay. back. Hey, we're back out here in the cheap seats. I'm Bobby V with Jake Johnston and Walt Landers, the head of the youth uh, wrestling program. And, uh, we got to mention some of our sponsors so we can stay on the air. Of course, we're out here at Jake's Furnishings. Yeah. And, and Jake's with us. How you doing, and, Jake? And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in case if you get a DUI, we've got Jim Grimaldi. Criminal defense attorney. Yes, very experienced. When you're uh, older years, we've got the Christian Village. Christian Village. Goodwill of Lincoln right behind me here in Woodlawn Road. Yes, very important part of the community. The Eaton Corporation, the formerly Cutler Hammer. Uh, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Bob Neal. Bobby Neal, he'll set up your uh, finances. And yeah. St. Clair's Manor, that's uh, a 200 say, block. That'll, uh, that'll get you in the old time as well. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, I was born there, but it was St. Clair's Hospital back in the old days. All right. Yeah. I can see that. Lincoln College. I went to Lincoln College for a little while, and they told me the best thing I could do was join the Army. But if you've got any <laughs> brains, go to Lincoln College. <laughs> Freaky Calvert Schrader Funeral Homes, big sponsor for the cheap seats here. Century Dental Center, that's where I go. I've got, you know, an implant or a few nice fillings from there. Nice. Real <laughs> estate agent, broker, Pat White of Johnson Real Estate. Check in with Pat. And she'll find you a home here in Lincoln. Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois. And uh, Miss uh, Alicia Schneider, Chiropractic Center. She's there when you're needing her. That's right. And, of course, we'll go backwards a little bit. Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois. They've got the Meals on Wheels and uh, Senior Transportation, great organization. Oh, yeah. yep. Characters Pub, yep. for a little relaxation there at Characters Pub. And the sponsor for next week's show, actually, I believe, will be at Blow No Smoke. Blow No Smoke, we've been there a couple times. And then sponsor number 16, the great Joe Ryan, a country financial agent. He's down on the square in Lincoln. And he's Lit supposed to show up on the show once in a while, but uh, I've never seen him. Uh, he makes appearances, and sometimes he? he shows up when you don't even know. He'll be in the background just waving. He'll just float it's in. Kinda, it's kind of odd, kind of awkward actually to be honest yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I that's joe ryan it. yeah <laughs> and then we got a uh, liberty village of clinton illinois uh community village uh over there in uh, dewitt county and then out here on the end of woodlawn loan uh ooh, woodlawn road the lincoln hampton inn hotel who is also our coffee and pastry sponsor for the morning show yes they haven't brought you sausages and no they haven't brought no. the biscuit and gravy yet no. i'm efforting on that though no <laughs> <laughs> okay, when we were off air, Jim prompted me to ask Walt, how do you get involved in the youth wrestling program? Uh, basically, we, uh, we're out at the Link Community High School. We practice in the mat room out there. Uh, we actually started uh, the 29th of October, so we've been at it for two weeks now. Uh, if you got any interest in being part of the program, you can come out and uh, we can get you registered. And you can watch a practice, see what we're all about, and make sure it's something you want to be involved in. Um, uh, basically, we practice Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, three days a week from 6 to, to 7.30. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, you can come out and, and uh, talk to us, and we can sit down and visit with you and watch practice and see if it's something you, you're interested in. Absolutely. And like I said, for you know younger guys, this is definitely a, a big builder uh, for, for them. Uh, when it, not only in sports, but character building as well. Yeah, there's, you know. there's so many uh, good things about wrestling that it can, you know, lessons to be learned, mm -hmm. um, you know, on an individual basis. And it's not, it's more about the kids than it is about, 
you know, if we can get a kid in there and be a good role model for him, um, you know, teach him a few things about sure. being a good good person and a good child and, yep. um, and, and have fun and learn a little bit about wrestling, then we've been successful. Well, who's... Who's helping you out out there with this uh, with this uh, organization? I mean, who, who comes in? There's so many people that help. That I was going to say, I, I know there's the a past. few. The parents. Um, Brian Turley's been involved with this since the beginning. Um, you know, and a lot of the dads are coaching. Um, I just hate to start mentioning names because I know I'll miss somebody. Miss Some them. of the, <laughs> the key people, you know, Missy Coning was been, has been involved for years. She's my treasurer. Uh, Rondo Donahue is doing a lot right now um, as a secretary, doing a lot of the paperwork stuff. Um, but there's just so many people that's helped us in the past um, and, and come out. And, you know, we need so many volunteers for our tournament. Uh, we probably need 100 volunteers to, to help operate that tournament. Cool. And um, I, I'm lucky I got a friend left in the world, to be honest with you, because <laughs> I there's people that don't have anything to do. They don't have anybody involved. The Valdezes, I don't know, uh, you know. Yeah, great people. Oh, and they're there. Yeah. I mean, you better call me and ask me to come and help. You know, that's mm-hmm. we had their son in wrestling years ago, and they've just always been a part of it, but they're there whenever you need them. Um, Very nice. And yeah. they've been around for years. There's, yeah, there's just so many people that, uh, and I'd like to thank them all if they're listening today because we sure couldn't do it without them. Well, we're going to give them a chance to win a couple tickets if they want tickets. If you can name the uh, the new wrestling coach at Lincoln High, and if you can't do that, name former coaches or whatever you can. Anything about wrestling, we'll give we're, away these two tickets. What are we tickets. giving away? We're giving away tickets to, uh, the, tic- the Bloomington hockey? Thunder, some oh, yeah. hockey. Some hockey. They're playing the Louisiana Ice Gators. Yeah. That's a little bit of play on words there. Ice Gators. <laughs> it can be fun. Yeah. It's a halftime show as well. Yeah, that's a great sport. <laughs> hockey. They, they got some tough guys just like wrestling in the hockey ranks. Oh, I don't know about that. They, they're sissies in hockey? <laughs> 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 I don't think so. Uh, there's an old hockey story, but we won't go on that. Won't go into well, that not one. Not on the air. <laughs> All right. Well, Walt, uh, you said you didn't do homework like me, but I bet you can name a lot of great wrestlers over the years. You mentioned you and... Uh, and the burgers at Lincoln College. Was there any guys that were idols of yours coming up or kids that you knew that went on to be good wrestlers? Yeah, there's a lot of guys that's been really successful. Probably the most successful is Dave Clem. Um, uh, and, and I hate to say, you know, I'm not exactly sure on the details, but Dave was almost uh, at the Olympics. Yeah, he's like a match away. Right. Well, actually, it was the year that we boycotted. Oh, an 80. Yeah, yeah. He would have been 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 the man been there the man and, oh that's uh, crazy uh it just didn't work out and he wrestled at eastern uh, down yeah. at eastern and was in, did very well yeah he's a man among men I, you see him around town really nice guy and uh, jake mentioned uh, the character building uh in wrestlers any of those guys you meet in later life are just gentlemen they're just they're nice guys right yeah, because they have a self-confidence about them yeah it's, it's just a lot to be learned from the sport and and it's a lot of it is the environment and the people you're around. Yeah. You know, if you're around that all the time and you absorb that, and it's just a, it you know, and it's not just here in Lincoln. It's a great community statewide, na- nas- you know, nas- nationally. So it's uh, you, once you're you're a wrestler, you're you're in a big family pretty much. Yeah. And we've had a great uh, string of coaches here. We mentioned Coach Rochek. Uh, and Coach uh, B, of course, and uh, Coach Gardner. And uh, Coach Gardner, he, I think he was the head coach for 13 years. Uh, that's probably about right, yeah. Yeah, and so he's staying at Lincoln High, but he's stepping down from... Uh, as far as I know, yeah. I, I don't know a lot about the situation. But yeah. Um, also, we'd like to mention Coach Steve Bradley. He's the head coach at Lincoln College right now. Okay. Um, and he's doing well, and they're always, you know, ranked in the top ten in the nation, and, you know, I think it was a year ago they had a national champion. Um, so, but they're always a national power in the JUCO. Uh, so they they got their season. I think they wrestled last weekend, and I think there might be at Muskegon okay. this year, this weekend wrestling. I'll so. see them sometimes out running. They'll run down Woodlawn Road. Yeah, his Road. wife's a runner. And yeah. They, yeah. Then the real, just he's a real good guy. We would do a spring and summer program out there at the college, and he's in there every day. You know, we're there two days a week, and he comes in and works with our 
little guys from the youth wrestling, the high school kids, junior high kids. And so. a great facility out there oh, at the yeah. college. I mean, what a mat room. I mean, their mat room's great. Yeah. I know you're all, well, all about the basketball floor, but that mat room's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, I've never been in there. It's I'll have to check that out. three full mats. Yeah. You know, three full mats, and it's in an all. It's it's great. Just a great facility. Weight room. Uh, they're the the training facility or the the fitness centers right there off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's it's a great program over there, and they do a good job with that also. So when will the season start at the, the junior high, Lincoln Junior High School? I think we start practice. It's kind of crazy. We start practice the second, I think, of December, mm -hmm. and we wrestle like within two weeks. And we that's have it. Our first meet, yeah. They don't give us much time. So, yeah. Uh, we've been down there a little bit, uh, you know, the past couple of years, but we've got them stacked up pretty good in the club. That where the old the older kids, you know, they're they're stacking up pretty good. So, hopefully, in the next year or two, we can. Uh, turn that program around with some of our youth wrestlers. Tell us a little bit about the wrestling's for everybody because there's weight divisions. Tell us how many divisions and what the weights well, are and so on. High school has 14 weight classes. Wow. From, from 106 pounds the being the lightest to heavyweight being the heaviest, which the heavyweight there's a limit. It's 285. You can't. Or it's 285 or 275. Okay. Uh, you can't be above that. Hmm. Um, uh, at the junior high level, there's actually 19 weight classes. Wow. Starting at 65 pounds, you know, all the way up to heavyweight. So, huh. at college has 10, I believe. So, an opportunity for In the, all yeah, kids. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter how big you are. You know, there's always, there's a place for you. Yeah. And, and like in our in our program, we got the little guys, or the kindergarten, first graders. There's uh, five different age divisions. We're sanctioned by... Uh, the IKWF, Illinois Kids Wrestling Federation, mm -hmm. um, and basically that's our sanctioning body, along with USA Wrestling, which is the national body, which is basically in charge of wrestling all over the United States. They run the Olympic programs, where they you know getting wrestlers ready for the Olympics and the and the World Championships and stuff. So, uh, but the the basically when we have our tournaments, the kids are blocked. So you'll take like the they usually wrestle a round robin. Mm -hmm. Got four guys in a weight class, or a, a bracket. Um, they'll start say start with the first four lightest guys. Um, I bet those we've are had exciting. guys. We've had guys, you know, thirty six pounds. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I bet those are guys, exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 really fun to watch them wrestle. Like hummingbirds going and, at it. Yeah, and then basically, you know, it just goes from there. The next four, the next four. So there's not really a set weight class until you get up the older age groups and you start going to the state series tournaments. Yeah. So, but you know, there's there's nothing. As a coach, you know, working with the kids all the time, you know, I've been involved in the youth football program for years. I've been out of that for a couple of years now, but there's nothing more rewarding than to take a kid that struggled uh -huh. and just worked his tail off and then just to watch him be successful one time. Break on through. And to see the smile on his face and the smile on his parents' face. Yeah. It's just, it's an awesome feeling. Hey, Coach Landers, let's take a look at the uh – the uniform, the shoes, the and the safety equipment, and how that's advanced and what what what's involved yeah, there. It basically hasn't changed much. I mean, it's a little crazier in design these days. You know, you can get singlets with anything on them. It seems like, and actually, we've got new singlets coming for our team this year. So we had a custom singlet done, and I think it looks pretty cool, and we're look really excited about that. Um, you know. It, they got a lot of different designs and things. But, you yeah. know, the shoes, you can spend 30 bucks or you can spend 150 bucks. Now, wrestling shoes, now, they, are they the kind that uh, strap way up the, they, the they bottom of the calf? They come just over the ankle. Just over the Not ankle. Not a boxer, okay. like a boxer okay. shoe, but they just come over the ankle like a high-top tennis shoe. Now, does that would that help with a spraining of an ankle or just gives you stability? Yeah, I think it's basically just keep the shoe on, you know. <laughs> okay. you got guys grabbing hold of stuff, and the yeah. things tend to pull loose and pull off. So, uh -huh. um, so you know, they, they just it's anything. You can spend as much as you want or as little as you want. So, so what about you got to wear headgear, right? Yeah, you got to have, have a headgear on to protect your ears. So uh -huh. Need that cauliflower ear going on. Yeah. So mom, I had a, moms tend to get a little upset about that. No, they don't that. like the cauliflower ears. I remember back in the day there was a place we'd go dancing called the Red Lion, and my wrestling buddy said, I used to like to go in there and fire places up like that dancing, and he said, uh, don't go too crazy tonight. He goes, look at the ears on these guys. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me the tip that right. all the bouncers yeah. were wrestlers. Yeah, if you can't see any grooves or kind of, you know, the contour of the ears, Probably been beat up a little bit. And yeah. Been some contact. Been in a few so. headlocks. 
So uh, you got the headgear on, but that's uh, must have some way where you can hear the coach. Yeah, it, it's got holes in it, and it's it doesn't obstruct your hearing at all. Um, you know, if the wrestler wants to listen, he will. If he doesn't, he won't. He's so, got yeah. Sometimes they get out there and they get that tunnel vision, and they and you can sit there and scream all you want, and and, and a lot of times it doesn't do any good. Um, but you get coachable kids, and you got to kind of keep an eye on the dads. The dads tend to get a little excited. Yeah. You know, you, sometimes you got to <laughs> ra- rein them rain in them a little in. bit. Calm down, Dad. You're excited. He's excited. So, yeah. you know, and we've had those situations, but, uh, you know, he's it, he's, we do good. he's learned to be a man on his own. He doesn't need Dad out there. Right, exactly. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, they're nervous. The kids are nervous. And that's yeah. something you don't want. So. Yeah. What about uh, uh, stalling? You know, you get a big lead. Right. Um, if you're avoiding wrestling or contact, you're going to get called for stalling. Okay. I mean, if you're running from the guy, not wanting him to get a hold of you. Yeah. And then it all depends on how much time's left in the match. You know, yeah. If I'm winning by one point and I got 30 seconds left and I haven't been called for stalling, I'll run from the guy until I get called, you know. So yeah, yeah. If it's a tight match. But, uh, you know, if you're avoiding contact in any way, you're not doing or active and trying to score points, you know, you're going to get nailed for stalling. Get penalized. So, well, Coach, uh, unfortunately, our uh, time has run out. I want to thank you very much for coming on, and uh, and you got a great program co- going on in Lincoln. It's one of the backbones yeah, we, of the community. Just uh, we got uh, 43 kids signed up right now. We probably got another 10 or 15 um, that are pending. Um, so, but we always have room for more if anybody wants to come out. Can you go over the dates again for the tournament coming up? Um, the Lincoln Railer Rumble Youth Wrestling Tournament is December 8th. Wrestling will start about nine o'clock out at Lincoln Community High School. Okay. Um, and we got to thank the, the high school out there, too, for all the things they do for us. Uh, how many we take that facility for granted so much. I mean, we just got an awesome facility. When yeah. you start going to these other schools and things, it's just, yeah. you know, we got just a great facility out there, and the staff takes care of us and helps us in any way they can. How, how many other teams are involved in that? Besides yeah, that team-wise, it's kind of hard to say. we probably got 40 or 50 different teams that come. Okay. Um, but, you know, one team may only have four wrestlers or five, yeah. where another will have, you know, a lot like Clinton. They're, you know, I got an email the other day. They're probably going to bring about 40 kids. Okay. And then they pay to be in the tournament. You know, it's 15 bucks to get in the tournament. Yeah. Everybody goes home with an award, regardless of what you did that day. And nice. Another nice thing that we did uh, uh, last year, we started something new, and we're going to do it again this year. Um, we teamed up with the high school and everybody out there where we charge an admission to get in our tournament, okay, mm-hmm. you know, at the door. Right. Uh, last year we made it a donation of $5 or a food item of worth $5. Or both. For Well, yeah, sure. We'll take whatever we can get and we give that to the food pantry. Yeah. Right. So we were, you know, trying to be good to the people that support us. Um we were able to raise over two thousand dollars and plus a pickup truck load of food for the food pantry last year and right before christmas you know that, that That's really great. helps them out and it, it gives us a way to you know help out the people that are helping us yeah so, and we're doing the same thing again this year so and that's a good organization unfortunately i see people lined up there all the time and it's a good thing right yeah well thanks for coming out coach well, uh, we're I gonna have to wrap it up but i know uh that jake and jim will have you back later on in the season more than willing to come back and talk about wrestling anytime all the success in the world to you yeah thank you thank you